there are two types of voltage transformer available the inductive voltage transformer and the capacitive voltage transformer when we talk about high and extra high voltage side uh, generally 145 kV and above the CVTs are used very popularly they offer a lot of benefits over the inductive voltage transformer and that's why they dominate that particular segment in this video, we will understand what is this capacitive voltage transformer, how it works and what are the advantage it offers over the inductive voltage transformer. Now, inductive voltage transformer operate just like the regular power transformer we have in uh, the, the working principle is electromagnetic induction as simple as that. So IVT also what we have is a iron core, we have primary winding and we have secondary winding. The thing is till a certain limit this arrangement is okay like for 36 kV or 12 kV we don't find any problem here. But as we go above in the voltage level 245 kV, 420 kV, 800 kV uh, this arrangement is problematic. Why? Because as the voltage level increases of course the core size must increase with that. That is one problem. Second, as the voltage increases, we must also strengthen the insulation that we have for this. Because if the insulation is not strong enough, there will be breakdown 100%. So we will be adding additional layers of insulation on that and that will make it further bulky. So imagine having a inductive voltage transformer of 400 kV, it will be huge. Just to compare, you can compare a 36 kV power transformer and a 400 kV power transformer. The size difference is huge. Why? Because the voltage rating is high. Uh, the inside materials are huge. The cores are huge. Insulations are huge. And as the insulation increases, as the core material increases, the losses in that will also increase, which makes uh, the inductive voltage transformer not so suitable for high and extra high voltage application. Their sizes are really, really big. You will find inductive voltage transformer up to 145 kV and in also in some cases uh, for 245 kV. But their usability is very, very minimal. The whole segment of high and extra high voltage is dominated by uh, the capacitive voltage transformer. With a lot of problems that we discussed with the IVT, uh, the thing that saves us, the thing that helps us in majoring and lowering down the voltage is the capacitive voltage transformer. But before we dive into how CVT works, here is something that might help you grow faster in your career. If you are someone who wants to build strong practical knowledge in power systems, switchgear and substation, definitely check out courses.theelectricalguide.n. These are industry relevant hands-on courses that I have personally designed to help engineer like you learn what actually matters on site. You will be joining a community of over 7000 professionals and students who are already upskilling through the structured real world content. The link is right in the description. Alright, let's now get back to the inductive and capacitive voltage transformer we were talking. So as I mentioned, IVTs have a lot of problem when we go to the high voltage side and that's where the capacitive voltage transformer or CVT comes into picture. Now CVT operates on the principle of voltage division by the capacitor plus the electromagnetic induction. So of course, as the name suggests, it's a capacitive voltage transformer. So we must have the capacitor, right? So here is the simple diagram of that. So imagine we have a high voltage line and we here we have the capacitor stack. So we have capacitor 1 and capacitor 2. Now what happens is when you connect the capacitor in parallel with the system, the voltage against each capacitor is getting divided, right? Let me actually show it to you using a simple circuit simulation. So here is uh, one simple circuit we have. We have a 10 volt voltage source and you can see I've connected two capacitors in parallel with that and a voltmeter is also there. And you can see this 10 volt is getting divided between these capacitors. So with one capacitor, we have 3.33 volts. With another, we have 6.67 volt. So voltage is getting divided across these capacitors. The division of voltage depends actually on the chemistry or the values of the capacitance that we have. So if I change the value of capacitance here, uh, you will see the voltage will across that also changes. 
So you see uh, the voltage has changed to 2.42 and 7.58. So based on the configuration of the size of the capacitor, uh, the value across that changes. The same thing is also used with capacitor voltage transformer. So here we have two capacitors and from the middle point, we are taking the supply. So here you will be able to connect your meters and relay. Well, no, you cannot connect directly uh, your relays and meter here because uh, the voltage that is getting divided here is still higher. Our meters are designed to carry 110 or 220 volts by root 3. That's the nominal voltage they can accept. Uh, but the capacitor will not reach to that level. Right, so it will be still in some kilovolts, maybe 10 kilovolt, 5 kilovolt, 20 kilovolt, depending on the capacitor configuration. So to address that, we need a auxiliary transformer, a small transformer, which will accept that small input from uh, the intermediate tap that we have for the CVT and then give us the output that we want. And that output would be 110 volt by root 3 or 220 volt by root 3. Now, why root 3? Because these transformers are single phase transformer. Right? It's not a three phase device. It's a single phase device. And that's why uh, we are using root 3 there. Now here, uh, to this auxiliary transformer, we can connect, let's say, meter or a relay and, uh, you know, measure the voltage or use it for protection purpose. And that's why when I say that the transformer uses the principle of voltage division by capacitor and also the electromagnetic induction. This is where the electromagnetic induction comes into picture, right? Now, of course, uh, this auxiliary transformer will also need insulation because we are connecting still a significant amount of voltage to it. And that is the reason why generally this is placed inside a tank, which is connected at the bottom of the CVT. I'll show you the actual photograph of that. And in that tank, uh, there will be insulating oil field. And in that oil, we will immerse this transformer for insulation purpose. That is, that tank is called as electromagnetic unit. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. So that is immersed in that and that provides basically the insulation for our transformer. Clear? But if you notice, uh, it's still not so good capacitive voltage transformer. We have some problems here. The first the, and the very obvious problem is that it's a capacitive element that we have added, right? And when we connect, let's say, a meter, which is a resistive load, the problem is the capacitor will give you a different phase angle. The resistive load is at different phase angle. So there will be a problem of phase displacement. So to address that, we need to do something. Now, going back to the basics, what is the thing that is opposite to the capacitor? Of course, it's inductor. So we add a small inductor in the circuit, right? So here is our inductor. Now this balance out the effect that is created by the capacitor. So once that is balanced out, we can connect our load to the CVTs, no problem there. But there is one more chance, one more problem is that now we have capacitor inductor circuit here uh, in the CVT. Maybe a very rare chance there can be electrical resonance that is happening. And resonance means the capacitive element and inductive element cancel out each other. And at a particular frequency, it creates a very low impedance path. And that will maybe cause the core to get saturated, overheating, and there can be problems with uh, the capacitive voltage transformer, right? So to avoid that, we use a damping circuit here. And that damping circuit will avoid any sort of resonance that may occur in the circuit. And all of these things are actually put inside the tank electromagnetic unit immersed with the oil. So that is the electromagnetic unit. Now the major advantage that we get or that the CVT offers is that its size, it's compact compared to what inductive voltage transformer is for the same rating. So if you imagine a 400 kV IVT and a 400 kV CVT, definitely CVT will be a slick in a design, minimal in design. And as a result, they are also cost effective. But along with that, they also offer one more advantage is that uh, when we are using power line carrier communication, they actually saves the cost of one equipment directly. What is that? We'll talk uh, in a few minutes. But uh, let me actually now show you the actual photograph of uh, the CVT and where are all these equipment placed so that you get uh, the complete idea. 
So here is the actual photograph of uh, the CVT. The first one is the CVT. This is not, this is just the supporting insulator. So here is the high voltage terminal that we have. And inside this insulator, it could be made up of porcelain. It could be made up of uh, uh, silicon composite insulator, as you can see uh, in the image. And inside this uh, insulator, we will have capacitor stacks. Small, small capacitors create C1 and C2. Now those capacitors are made up of uh, uh, you know polypropylene material very thin paper like material and those stacks will be placed inside this insulator now in the tank at the bottom that what you see is basically the electromagnetic unit here we will have the auxiliary transformer the damping circuit the reactor so everything is placed inside that and of course it is filled with the oil and then you can see here we have the terminal box where the terminals will go out and then it you can connect it to the relays to the meters uh, and the other applications so this is how the cvt works this is how the cvt looks now as i said the capacitive voltage transformer offers a very big advantage over the regular inductive voltage transformer and it basically saves the cost of one additional equipment now what happens is uh, the transmission line that we have they also used for communication purpose so along with the power frequency signal which is at 50 or 60 hertz we also use the line for communication signal now those communication signal are at very high frequency 50 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz so very very high now ideally uh, this signal should not enter into the substation because if they do uh, they may interact with the transformer and there can be uh, some issues with that so we must block those signal right and that's where the wave trap or line trap comes into picture wave trap will block those high frequency signal and only allow the uh, power frequency signal which is at low frequency so this blocked signal then will try to identify a path a low impedance path and they will get it via the capacitors, right? Generally, if uh, we are not using CVT, then we will have to have a coupling capacitors. Now, via that coupling capacitor, the signal will go and will be given to the power line carrier communication devices, PLCC devices, right? So if you are not using a CVT, you will have to use a coupling capacitor uh, for that purpose. But since we already have a CVT and if we couple it with the wave trap, it will be able to divert that high frequency signal to the power line carrier communication. So with this, we are actually eliminating the use of dedicated coupling capacitors. So CVT can help us do two jobs with one single device. And that is the very reason why they are very popularly used in high voltage uh, system. Of course, um, if you're not using uh, the power line carrier communication, then you may not need the wave traps and the CVT can perform their job as a voltage transformer perfectly fine. So it's not necessary that you have to have uh, the communication uh, signal with that. But that is the advantage that you get. If you're not having CVT in the substation and you have a power line carrier communication, then you will have to use a coupling capacitor with that. Now, if you don't know what is wave trap and how do they work, I have a dedicated video on that. I'll put link for that video down in the description. You can go and understand how wave trap works. So here is the quick summary. The CVT operates on a simple principle of voltage division by the capacitor and also with the help of electromagnetic induction. So we have small auxiliary transformer uh, with the CVT. And when we couple the CVT with wave traps, it can also act as a coupling capacitor. So few people also call it as CCVT, coupling capacitor voltage transformer, but it's the same device and it is compact compared to the IVT and can serve two different purposes as we discussed. So I hope you have clear idea about why CVT is so popularly used in the high voltage side and how they operate. Now, as I said in the beginning, we have two types of transformer, the inductive voltage transformer and the capacitive voltage transformer. If you want me to make a dedicated video talking on the differences between these two, then comment, compare in the comment section below. If I get enough comment, then I'll be definitely creating a dedicated video talking on the differences between these two devices. 
all right so that's all for this video guys thank you so much for watching as i said definitely go and check out the wave trap video that will give you a complete and clear idea how cbt's can be beneficial in high voltage side thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one but till then keep watching keep learning